At this time, we'll just uh, turn it over to you folks, media, and fire away. So the panel is yours. For uh, Robin and Paul, uh, obviously you guys had uh, great careers that are well documented. It's kind of a two-part question. First of all, what has changed, or what, in your opinion, what has changed in the game since you guys have been done playing? Uh, has that changed your perspective on the game going from player to player? I think as far as changes, um, they're, they're always kind of gradual. It's never you know, like overnight. But the, uh, the continued um, evolvement of specialization, particularly in pitching, uh, you know, what's required out of your starting pitching has certainly changed a lot from you know, back when a lot of us started playing. And, uh, you know, we kind of went through the home run period, and that was what it was. But I think teams are starting to get back to more athletic speed, base running, defense type things because the ball's not flying over the fence as much. So, uh, but yeah, the game's going to always kind of change. There's going to be generation to generation. Um, coaching, you know, you just kind of get out there and you pass on what you learn. You try to keep learning while you're teaching and uh, kind of learning how to teach. You know, I enjoy doing my base running and infield things up there in Minnesota, but uh, always challenging, just trying to make players better, you know? Personally, I don't know that the game has changed all that much. You know, the basics are still the same. Uh, generations have changed in all areas, whether it be sporting world or, you know, outside of that. So, you know, I, I think, Personalities might be a little different to deal with in that the biggest change I see, I guess, if, there, if I had to come up with the changes, is the direction players today are, are looking for coaches to give them advice all the time. Uh, they rely on their coaches as far as where to play, what the next pitcher may have as far as uh, types of pitches, this, that, and the other thing. What kind of move do they have? It seemed like when we played, we did more of that on our own, and it was, we learned and understood uh, the situation of particular games, I think a little better, and that we were, I think we were a little more instinctive than, than players are today. Uh, I, I would certainly give the players today as there's more better athletes, bigger, stronger, faster guys out there, and that's happened over time. But I'm not so sure that they uh, instinctively play the game quite as well. Again, I think they've, since they've been very, very young kids, they, they've always been told what to do and not let loose and learn how to play the game on their instincts versus uh, uh, rather being coached into what they're supposed to do. This could be for any of you three guys. Do you think of the chances of anybody playing together as long as you three, the way baseball has changed the free agency, do you think there's any chance that anybody will do that if you play longer than anybody on the trio? Well, I'll answer that quickly. I, chances are going to be slim, uh, obviously. The, the, the game in general has changed with free agency the way it is in player movement so much. Re players move because they want to, players move because owners want to move them, players move because teams can't afford play. There's so many more reasons to move that certainly that cuts the chances down for players to stay together long, as long as, as maybe we did. But uh, it, it still may happen, but it's, it's, uh, obviously the odds are much less. I was just going to say, you know that Posada and Jeter and Rivera broke the record last year for longest tenure for three teammates. So there you go. They went <laughs> past us by, this will be their sec 17th year, I think, together. But uh, yeah, like Robin said, I'm probably not going to see that for a while. What intrigues all you guys to come out to this kind of event? Gumby, go answer that. <laughs> Gumby will say the beer, I'm sure. But. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not drinking tonight. Okay, then get up there and tell them why you're here. Just some wine. Oh, well, some wine. It's for a great cause. You know, baseball has always been big in lacrosse, and uh, I played at Oshkosh, and lacrosse is always a baseball town, and uh, we usually beat them, but <laughs> we're not going to leave, and uh, the 
like I said, <laughs> keep baseball in this city. It's a great city. They got the loggers now, and it's a great organization. And uh, so it's good to come out and support and try to raise some money for the campus college. Foggy, you got anything to say? You come on up there, Augie. Get up there, Augie. Say why you're here. Why am I here? Yeah. Well, I got a little bit <laughs> different reason than you, than these guys right here. These guys here because I graduated, came to school here, and I played here. Uh, you know, everybody has different ways of getting in their paths. For me, lacrosse was more than baseball. Was uh, I learned how I learned to grow up real quickly. Uh, I learned a lot about life in itself, and also had the opportunity to play good baseball. And yeah, Gumby and I had we had some good encounters, uh, which he'll tell you about later on. But I think when you look at it. The reason these guys are here, it's for a love of a game, and the game is baseball. And to do something special for for an area that is looking to keep baseball, and any time that these guys have that opportunity to do it, that's what makes it special. And when you look at all these guys playing, they played on a major league level, and they played at a special level, that, you know, they want to give back. And that's one thing you'll find out about Wisconsin people or anybody who's ever played in that Brewer organization. They're very special people and they always want to give back. And I think that's the reason we're all here tonight. I can't, I can't answer that. I, <laughs> there was no college that would let me in. <laughs> I wanted to go, really. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, college was important for me. I think just because as an 18-year-old, I wasn't like Robin. I was not ready to play at that level. I think college kind of helped me kind of develop a little bit physically, mentally. And then I, as, I, as I went to the minor leagues, that helped me more and more. So... Uh, you know, college baseball, that's great to watch, especially locally here. I played locally here. Um, we played UWL, and like Gumby, we beat them all the time, too. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, it was, uh, it was a long time ago when I played here, and, 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 and I know at the time when I was, when I was playing here, UWL had a, had a great program, and, and it's just because I was on the other side of the city doesn't mean that I don't want to support what, UW, what UWL has to offer, and that's... Uh, a great baseball program, bring kids here to play and get out and watch them. So it's, it's uh, basically why uh, why college is just is, is important to me. As a lacrosse native, um, does this have a little bit more special meaning to you, keeping something alive here that the, the place you were born? I think so. And I think well, George will speak for uh, that as well. That uh, you know he actually coached there and grew up in this town just like I did, and um, you know it was. At one time, it was myself, George, and Scott Service were in the big leagues at the same time. From this small little community, I mean, that just shows you right there how big uh, baseball is around here. Does it kind of hurt you at all to see like some of the players that may not get that same opportunity that you got because of the financial things that they can't even control? Is that a <coughs> reason why you try to help out when you can? Yeah, I think it's just uh, you want to give every kid an opportunity, especially we know what the talent that we have around here, and and for us, it's just the right thing to do. Come out here and and give our support and hopefully get UWL back on the right track. It's a question for Robin and... Uh, yeah, there, George. Ask George something first. Go ahead. Finish <laughs> well, I'll just uh, elaborate on the, uh, the uh, opportunity for the players um, to have college as an opportunity. Uh, Vinny Rettino played here. He was the player of the year of the Wisconsin uh, League and uh, didn't get drafted, but still had the opportunity to sign with the Brewers. Became, uh, I think after two years, he was their minor league player of the year. Um, so without the opportunity for him to play in college ball, he probably would have never had that opportunity as he still didn't get drafted. But, you know, and then just uh, being here for the cause, uh, supporting uh, UWL and keeping baseball alive here. And, you know, with the loggers, it's just a good community for baseball. and. You know, you just hate to see it go away, so try to do what we can. So one more. One more. Robin, Jim, yeah. Paul, that, uh, when they were closing down the Milwaukee County Stadium on the, on the Brewer broadcast, they had people email in and share their greatest experiences in Milwaukee County Stadium. And uh, I got to share one where it was batting glove day, and Paul was there signing autographs, and I got his, his autograph. It was, it was a great day. Uh, 
Is there one certain game or one certain time with you three in a game that you remember more than anything else from Milwaukee County State? Uh, for me personally, one game is hard to single out. Uh, I said this earlier. Um, for me, the World Series was by far the highlight of anything I ever did, it's in the sporting world at least. Um, so, I guess if I could single out one particular moment in County Stadium, probably be hitting a home run in a World Series, something that you dream about when you're this big as a little leaguer, maybe hitting a home run in a World Series. And I was fortunate enough to do that in County Stadium. So, I guess to me that would be the single moment that was kind of the coolest one I had. Go me, Paul. I guess mine would be the fifth game. Came back and beat the Angels. Down two zip, came back and won three in a row. That's gotta be the highlight. Uh, Going nuts on the field with the yeah, fans, I, you know? Yeah, that was pretty good. There, you, <laughs> you know, there, but it was the playoffs, it wasn't the real series. There, there's no question no, County Stadium good. provided a lot of, you know, special memories both collectively. You know, we had a chance for us three to play together that entire time we were there. and. Uh, you know, there was funny moments, uh, you know, Jimmy having Robin's jersey on during the National Anthem out there on the field when they were yeah. standing next yeah. to each other, a couple of 19s. But I'm with Jimmy as far as my highlight. Um, yeah, when when, uh, when Cecil Cooper got that hit in uh, that fifth game, it was Charlie and Jimmy came around to score to put us ahead. I, I popped up, I think Robin walked. And Cecil got the hit, but I, that was as loud as I ever heard County Stadium. That place was shaking. And we were on the, put us on the verge of getting into a World Series um, after we, Pete Ladd was able to shut him down. But that, that, that moment probably sticks out as the highlight for me as well. I'd like to say just one thing, because I'm the lacrosse grad and I can. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I got the opportunity to live my dream. I'm a little Wisconsin kid that grew up in Kiwani, Wisconsin, throwing snowballs and, and balls against the house and doing all the great things, but there's different things in your life that make you feel really neat. And it, something happened to me today that was really kind of cool. I played with these guys for almost about a whole year, my whole career here in Milwaukee. Every time I took them out, I turned around and I, I turned around and look who I saw. I saw Paulie at short, or Paulie at third, Robin at short, Jimmy at second, and Koopy at first, but it is, it, it, today come and see these guys, but how they played together as, as teammates and all the fun they had, all the pranks, and there were many of them. But just to see these guys today and see how they are today, when they went up in that room and they sat down, it was like we have never been apart. And I think when you talk about baseball and you talk about any things in life, there's not a lot of things you can do that can bring about special times. And today when I walked in that room and I saw all three of these guys together, and then later see the other, George and, and, uh, and Damien, it became really special. So for me, being a lacrosse grad, being here in lacrosse, pitching on that field in a lot of snowstorms, to seeing these two guys today, <laughs> pretty special.